That's the air rushing sound as the tool lands in my hand spontaneously. G'day folks, it's DIY Guy 123 here, bringing you another do-it-yourself video. Today, we've got a new tool in the shop. That's always an exciting day. The tool I'm gonna demonstrate today is a brand new X-Tool IP819. This is a brand new line from X-Tool. The IP stands for I'm quite familiar with the X-Tool D7. That's the air rushing sound as the tool lands in my hand spontaneously out of nowhere. This tool, great tool. I've had it for, I don't know, three or four months now. I've used it to fix a whole pile of things. It's already paid for itself a couple times already. And uh, if you check my channel, I've got a few videos on how to use it and some of the cool features about it. So when I was working with this tool, I had some questions. I asked the customer service team at Xtool. They responded quickly and completely. And I thought, ah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm enjoying this experience. I got chatting with them. And they asked me to test the IP819. So full disclosure, the D7 was purchased, but the IP819, this was a, this is a sponsor video by Xtool. So, just want to be transparent about that and tell you exactly what I think. And no, at the end of this video, I'm not going to beg you to buy the tool and tell you it's better than every other tool. I'm going to give you a fair review about it. But I'm not so interested in the review. I'm going to just tell you how to use the tool. What I'm going to do is I'll show you what's in here. I'm going to get it hooked up. So, it came in a larger box than this and some, pack, some packing foam or whatever around it. And it uh, comes in a handy case. Pretty much the exact same case as the D7, only this one's black. And I can already see an improvement they made over the D7 case with some Velcro straps to hold the actual tool in place. That's smart because with the D7, it's not a big deal. I just, I have to hold the tool in the top case and kind of close them together. Uh, this, I won't have to do that anymore with, because of the Velcro. So nice touch there. There's a QA certificate and a manual and some other stuff. I feel that this is probably close enough to the D7. I'm actually not gonna read the manual, which is unusual for me. Usually I read the manual cover to cover. USB cable for charging, charger. I had fed back to Xtool that they should not have these things connected when, uh, when they ship it because it was confusing to me how to get the European adapter off of the USB charger. So anyway, looks like they've taken that advice and oh, that's it. I guess it's on there. It just fits in a groove and rotates a little bit. So that's ready to go. One. They've got a cable here. This is an improved cable. Um, over the D7 because it does not come with a separate adapter that has to clamp onto there. The D7 cable looks like this and this connector screws onto that connector. One time I was testing a vehicle and the, connect, the OBD2 connector was under the dash and I pulled the cable and I'd forgotten that part in the car and they drove away and I had to, I had to get it back. This is a much improved design to not have that extra adapter. It's easier to use, it's smaller for under your dash, it fits in your case better, and you can't lose that little connector there. So this is an improvement. I actually, I think I read somewhere that on the D7, they now ship, not with this, but with that, but I'm not certain anymore. But anyway, it's not a big deal, it's just, it's a nice touch. So here's the unit. If we compare it to the D7 on the bottom, they're exactly the same screen size. They're physically the same size as well. I guess the IP9 or 819 is a little bit wider, but not a big deal other than that. Um, if you look at the top connections, they are mostly similar. Power button on the right. There's this other connection here, which I don't know what that is for. This is the connection that goes to the OBD2 port. There's the USB connection. And now on this D7, it's the uh, micro USB. On the IP819, it's the full-on rectangular USB. They both have a speaker in the back and a microphone.
and I'm going to time how long it takes from the time you open the box until you can start reading codes. By the way, I know that when you turn on a tool like this for the first time, it always needs to go through software updates to get the latest software. That can be a lengthy process. Uh, out of the factory it comes capable of reading certain okay so we've got our cable plugged in restart my timer and I gotta power this on press and hold the button for a second oh that lights up that's a nice touch let's get this guy powered on let's see how long it takes for that and we'll get it connected to the Mustang similar set of gauges just like the D7 selecting the language Thanks for using our product. You need to activate by the internet. If not, you can click the trial button. Yeah, I don't want the trial button. I want to activate. I'm going to add my internet connection. Okay, so I got connected with Wi-Fi. It says, dear customer, greetings. Thanks for using the product. The, you need to activate by the internet. If not, you can also click the trial button, which is on the top right to try out our product. I'm going to activate because I don't know what might be limited on the trial. So I'm going to start activate and then it asks me for an email address. So I'll be typing that in off screen. One kind of comment is after you type your email information in, there's kind of an, not an easy way to get to the bottom of the screen. I'm trying to scroll up and I can't do it. And I'm trying to get rid of the keyboard and I can't do that. I'm past it now, but there was like a Chinese character in the bottom right. I typed that and it, uh, it brought me to the next screen. Clicking the user agreement, clicking OK. Activation success. Now it's <laughs> past the activation screen. That's initializing data, counting up from 40%. So this is all real time. I just want to be transparent on how long it actually takes. If you were in a jam, you bought this tool, you're excited to solve a problem, it would matter to you maybe if it was going to take three hours to get it ready or if you can get it ready in 10 minutes. While it's initializing, this is the first time it's turned on from the factory, so it may go through a longer initialization period this time versus every other time that it turns on. We are now in at 3 minutes and 15 seconds, and majority of that time was me typing in my email address. Okay, so it's telling me there are 120 updates. Now I'll go in and I'll just show you quickly what that is all about. These are updates to special functions, anything they have developed and deployed since this was manufactured at the factory. Now, I'm not gonna go and do those updates right now because I wanna get right on to check the codes. I just wanna show you that we can quickly get ourselves organized and start reading codes with this thing. So, I know where the connector is and I get that plugged in and now we're turning the key on. I know it's pretty dark, sorry about that. Key on. I'm hitting auto scan. Oh, it identified the Mustang, that's good. It knows what it is. Automatic scan. Now it's scanning all the modules on the car. A mm -hmm. couple of failures. It finished scanning all the modules. There are 15 in this car. Failure in the ABS. We can diagnose. Actually, let's do this. Let's do a DTC report. And this shows all the codes right away. So there's an ABS steering angle sensor problem. There's a APIM control module problem. And then power steering voltage of the battery problem. So, boom. Code's there. Let's check what time it is. We are looking at... Under five minutes. In less than five minutes, if you happen to know what your email address is, you're gonna have codes read from your car. So this is just the introductory video. I'm gonna do several videos showing how to use this tool, but this is intended to show you how fast you can take an X tool out of the box and get it reading codes. First of many videos, stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna learn about the D7 and the D8 and other types of scanners that I'll be looking at. This is an interest of mine, and if it's an interest of yours, you'll want to subscribe. Take it easy.